I'm Justin Mott and welcome to my home in Hanoi, Vietnam. And today I'm going to talk about travel hacks, specifically airport travel hacks for photographers, cinematographers, or all you hybrid shooters out there. I'm freshly coming off my first post-pandemic international flying experience and rules and regulations out there have changed. And guess what? Surprisingly, they haven't changed for the better. They've gotten even worse, especially for all of you out there like me who travel quite frequently and more importantly, travel with a lot of gear. But lucky for me and lucky for you through the years, through all my experience traveling internationally for over a decade, all over the world for commercial work, editorial work, taking all sorts of gear on big planes, small planes, domestic, international, I've come up with a bunch of travel hacks. Those hacks have been like chambered for all these years. I haven't had to use them, haven't had to like unleash them, but now I have and I'm gonna share them with you guys. So fear not the airports, fear not the airlines, fear not international traveling, fear looking like an idiot with some of the things I'm gonna suggest that you do today, you might think they're overkill, but you'll look like an idiot that gets to travel with all that precious gear. So if that's important to you, if that sounds like something you're interested in, stay tuned to hear my airport travel hacks. <laughs> So as always guys, don't forget to check out my online store at justinmott.com where I've got presets starting as low as $4.99. That will not make you a better photographer, but they will add some pop to your images. I've also got one-on-one -on -one sessions via Zoom starting as low as $99 for one hour, open to all levels of photographers interested in all genres of photography. I've also got prints starting as low as $99 with free shipping worldwide. So guys, it's good to be back again. Like I explained, I've been on the road for a month. Sorry I haven't been engaging as much, sorry I haven't been putting out as much content as I normally do. I've got a lot of new stuff coming soon. I've got a whole new rig set up here. I've got a new audio system courtesy of my friends over to Deity. So it's good to be back here in Hanoi, good to be back with you guys. Sorry I haven't been putting out as much content as I usually do. Sorry that I haven't been as up to date on my monthly contest. I'll get back to everything. I was on the road, I hit the road again, but I've got a whole new setup here. I'm using natural light today, but I will go back to my lighting, but I just wanted to do some moody light today. That's not true, my lights are actually out on a photo shoot with my team right now. So yes, I travel for a bit. I was in Kenya for three weeks filming with my wife, filming a couple wildlife documentaries. Then I went to the US, I went to Boston and Rhode Island, then I flew to the West Coast to visit my brother, went to San Francisco. So I did a lot of international traveling and then domestic traveling within the US. And that's what sparked this episode here. Things have changed out there. For all of you living in the US and Australia, you're gonna say, yeah, I'm used to this stuff, so it's not a big deal. This has happened, but for those of you living in Southeast Asia, for me living in Vietnam, over 15 years, I've never had any of these problems I'm gonna talk about, uh, but things have changed. You know, post-COVID, I think airlines are hurting, they're getting stricter, more rules, more ways to get more money out of you, and yeah, they're just not nearly as nice as they used to be. So I'll start with the beginning, what happened to me, what sparked this, so my wife and I were traveling to Kenya, like I said, filming those documentaries, so we had a bunch of different gear with us. She does BTS, so she had her whole BTS video kit. I was doing stills and video, so I had all that different equipment. I had my Sony FX3, I had my Leica equipment, and all the lenses that go along with that. So we just had a ton of gear, and we were going away for a long period of time, so we kind of just had everything, and then backups of everything. And it weighed a lot. Often when I travel for commercial work, I take a ton of gear, and like I said, never ever leaving Noi Bai Airport, leaving Hanoi Airport, have I ever had to weigh my carry-on bag. I know, again, Australia, Europe, US, you get this all the time, just never had to deal with it here. But in addition to that, we were flying Emirates, so I'm gonna call out airlines, I'm gonna name names here, I'm gonna point fingers, we are flying Emirates, and when we arrived, we were informed. I didn't know, I didn't do my research ahead of time. I just assumed things were what they used to be. Ne never assume, and that's gonna be one of my tips later. Never assume, and I always check the regulations, but uh, the new rules were one carry-on, seven kilograms, and no personal bag, so meaning nothing. No neck pillow, no little satchel, no nothing. Not even like a little like waste bag or anything like that. Nothing, that you had one bag and one bag only, and they were gonna weigh it, and they were gonna be strict about it. So. We didn't really know this ahead of time, so we went to the airport, we kind of hid the two bags that were heavy with all the gear, had a giant backpack and a roller bag, two think tank bags, and we just had them filled with gear. They were probably about like 15 to 20 kilos each, so way over for sure, but it's glass. Like, I didn't want to check it in. I know people say, oh, use Pelican cases, to check it in. Forget it. I'm not risking that. I'm not risking it not showing up. I'm not risking it getting damaged. I'm just not going to do it. So we had all that. It was it weighed a lot, and we kind of hit those two bags, but our smaller little carry-on bags or other bags, because we didn't know at this point, like, there was no personal bag allowed either. 
and we took we kept all the heavy gear in that we kind of hit it and then we did the old switcheroo so when we back after they tagged those bags we took those tags off because they weren't like attached with tape we took them off and then we attached them to the other bags but as we walked to security before we went through security there was two people there from the airline and they were checking people i couldn't believe it i'd never seen that before and so you can't have two carry-ons you have to go back and then we had to go back and like Oh, well, now we gotta weigh the big bags. Now we're in trouble. So this is where tip one, and this is like the best tip. If you guys don't know this, many of you do, but if you don't know it now, this is gonna be like the one you watch. I should probably tease you and say there's something better at the end, but there's not. There's other good stuff in here, but this is easily the best one. So what I've done through the years, because I knew I was traveling to the US, I knew I might run into this problem in the United States, I didn't think ever I'd run into this in Kenya or Vietnam. I just didn't, it just haven't happened before. I've traveled to Kenya three times and I've been traveling to Vietnam for 15 years, in and out of and domestically. So, but I knew I was going to the US, so what my wife and I did, we also had packable jackets with us. So this is tip number one. Always, every time you travel, especially from here on in, travel with a packable jacket or a vest, if you don't mind being like extra nerdy, or do what I do is travel with a field jacket like this, something kind of lightweight with a lot of pockets. So this thing here, I mean, this is a, I'll put a link to this one specifically because a few of you have asked me, follow me on Instagram. This is a Flint and Tinder field jacket. I got it at Huckberry. I really like this because it's not like too nerdy, like a, photographer vest is and it's not like lightweight like you could take a very very lightweight rain jacket but that's going to get kind of flimsy and a little bit obvious too when you start filling it with stuff whereas this you can hide things a little bit better now i live in a warm climate so it's a little bit tough at the airport for a little while but you'll figure out you can take it off later on that stuff but this jacket here i've got a pocket up here i've got pockets down here pockets over here and what you do is and this is like a basic tip but again a lot of you don't know it keep this bag in your carry-on just have it ready to go at any airport so what we did after that, after we knew we had to weigh the big bags, I took all the batteries out, all the lenses out, all the camera bodies out, and I stuffed them in this jacket. I got everything from here, here, and here. Everything in each one of these pockets. I even have interior pockets. Like, I honestly think this isn't a bad idea for me to come out with like the custom Justin Mod Edition travel jacket. Maybe Think Tank, maybe Walton Craft, maybe one of you guys will work me on this. I think that'd be cool. Or someone steal the idea and just like send me a check later on. Cause I think it's a fantastic idea with all like exact lens pockets. That would be kind of cool, like padded lens pockets. But what I did was I took all that equipment out. My wife had a long trench coat with her. She always gets cold easy, so she traveled with like a big jacket. We filled all of it in there, and then basically they weighed the, they weighed the bags. They were less than seven kilos. And then after that, we sort of went around the corner. It's a stupid little charade, but we're around the corner. We took everything out and packed it back in the jacket, and we're good to go. No problems there. But there could be an issue in the future, and I'm actually going to take this off because it's really hot now. Back in Vietnam now, it's getting hot again. Get, so get used to seeing me sweating when I film my episode. Sorry, like sweat stains here and stuff like this. Sorry, it's getting gross. So problem solved, but kind of, because I also saw when we were in Dubai, I saw a lot of brand new, like 2021 edition scales, like a lot of scales and not at the check-in, but at the gate. So I saw a lot of these scales like sort of like piled up. So those are probably gonna be used next. They're probably, you know, everyone's doing the same thing we're doing. So what they're gonna do in the future, I know they're gonna do this. They're gonna start weighing things again at the gate. And so the work around there is gonna have to be, there's two options there. The work around there is, you know, take everything out, put it in your bag, go through security so it's easy. Then when you go back out through security and you get to the gate, you can see and check if they're weighing things or if they're not weighing things. Or look at the same airline, look at the flight before, look at a flight before yours and check, like eyeball it, see, see what they're doing, see if they're weighing bags again. So what you can do if they're weighing and after you eyeball, if you see they're weighing people again at the gate, uh, what you can do is, you know, do the same movie did before, pack everything in your jacket and then go through the gate. Then when you get on the plane, they're not gonna weigh you in your seat. I mean, that, that could be in the future. I hope not, I hope they don't get like that, but what you could do there, and then when you sit down, you could basically like take everything out. And if you really like me and you get anxious, you don't wanna hold up the line, you don't wanna be in the aisle and like putting everything back into your bag, what you can do is another little trick is just carry a little packable bag, North Face, Patagonia, they make them, they fold up really small, or just carry a tote, you could wear it under your shirt, a small tote, or roll it up, put it in your pocket, have that tote with you. When you get to your seat, take everything out, or you can even put like the stuff you need for in-flight, like your headphones, your laptop, snacks, things like that, and then just put everything in the tote, and then when you deplane, is that a word? When you when you get off the plane, you can have your two bags and I gotta check you when you're leaving the plane. So that's another little option. So again, a jacket with a lot of pockets, hopefully it doesn't weigh a lot. Keep that in your carry-on bag. Take it out when you get to the airport, see if they're weighing everyone, if they are, which I think they're gonna do for everyone. Pack away stuff in your jacket, get your bag weighed. Once it's tagged, go around the corner, 
take all the stuff out of your pocket, put it back in. If they're doing it again at the gate, put everything back in your jacket, board the plane, take everything out, put it in a tote, put it by your feet, and then good to go. I would also suggest having some little lens, padded little lens bags with you just in case, or even having some pads in your bag or just a extra little t-shirt you can roll stuff up in there just to keep everything safe. If you have a chance on the plane, if it's a long flight, take all those lenses out. First chance you get to stand up, you know, open up the overhead, put all your stuff back in, and you're good to go. So that's tip number one. That's the main tip. That's how you're gonna work around this. Tip number two sounds obvious, but reduce gear. I mean, just do it. Like, think about what you need, what you don't need. If you don't need that 70 to 200, don't take it. I mean, don't be underlensed. If you really think you're gonna use it, fine, take it. Don't take that macro lens. If you don't think you're gonna use it, you might only use it for like one shot. Again, I'm a big advocate of having the right gear for the job, but just be honest with yourself, know what you use, know what you don't use, and just take only what you need. Or there's ways to work around that too, you know, like if, you, if you're going and you have a zoom, like I don't like zooms too often, but for some shoots it might work where you don't need like four primes and two zooms, maybe you can just consolidate, like have the 7200 and then have like your 35 prime and consolidate there. Uh, I'm more of a prime person, but again, if you do zooms and primes, like don't take everything, cover yourself with the zoom spectrum, and maybe take one prime outside that range. Just reduce the amount of gear. It's an obvious one, but it's important. Tip number three is get a lightweight bag. I see a lot of people traveling with a Pelican case, which will probably just eat up your seven kilograms right there for your, <laughs> for your check-in. Uh, if you don't really need that like really hard case, don't take it. They look cool sometimes, but they draw a lot of attention. They weigh a lot. They just don't make sense. Um, if you're going to use a roller bag, I like to use a roller bag in certain situations. I would still recommend using a backpack because you're less likely to draw attention. Backpacks just draw less attention than a roller bag. But if you're going to use a roller bag, I use the extremely lightweight Think Tank Airport Advantage XT. I love that roller bag. It's their extreme lightweight roller bag. It comes in at 3.5 kilos, which is very lightweight compared to all the other roller bags out there. But still, that's half your allowance right there. Roller bags weigh more than backpacks typically. But if you're going to go with a roller bag, if you're going to be traveling a lot, you need to wheel, you need that comfort, you got a bag back or whatever. I, rec I highly recommend that bag. Again, I'll put a list to all the gear I'm talking about in the description box below. I am a Think Tank ambassador, but I've loved and used their bags way before I was an ambassador for them. But if you don't buy their bag, fine. Just look for a lightweight roller bag. Uh, again, I'd highly suggest a backpack. Another little trick you can do. You might think I'm going too extreme here, but I don't like to be called out. I don't like to deal with these situations like even once. And in the U.S., they can be strict. And even in the U.S., I had like they threatened to like, oh, we'll just put you on another flight if you can't figure it out. Over, over a cine saddle, which I told them was a neck pillow, which they believed, but they counted it as one of my carry on. That's how strict they can be in the, especially the US, they can be like real douchebags about it. So what you can do there just to not draw attention is you could wear a backpack. Wear a backpack like proportional to your size. Like my wife's really small. So if she wears a really giant backpack, then it looks obvious and she's going to get called on the line. So two things you can do is get a backpack that's proportional to your size. I know it's not fair, but just make sure it doesn't look big. The other thing you can do is have this backpack be the same color as your shirt. It's not going to look as big. I know, seems extreme, but it'll work. So wear a black t-shirt, wear a black bag, and it just blends in a little bit more. It's not gonna stick out, but if you got like a white t-shirt on, a giant red backpack, if you see the separation, you know what I mean. So just go with a lightweight bag. If you don't need a roller, use a backpack. Highly recommend it. Less likely to be seen. It's just not like the eye line. You got your backpack, it's behind you. They're not looking so much. You got that roller bag off to the side, and they're gonna eye it, and it's just, that's the first thing if they're gonna, it's the first thing, especially if they're just like full flight, and they're saying, oh, we gotta check in some of these bags. They're gonna go for you with that giant roller bag. Tip number four is invest in versatile gear. Now, I'm not saying you have to go out and buy all new gear, but every few years, every once in a while, when it's time to like look at all your gear and get new stuff or upgrade or whatever, just think about gear that's versatile. Think about stuff that's gonna work for you if you're gonna start to grow into shooting more video. There's so many great cameras out there that can shoot stills and shoot video really well, so if you think you're growing into being more of a hybrid shooter, Look into that. I like Sony equipment for that stuff. Sony does great video gear. Um, but I'm also, you guys know, I'm a Leica person. So for my stills, I'm still committed to my Leica equipment. Still got my Leica M's and my Leica M lenses. And if I'm going to shoot video, I might take my Sony FX3. But what I'll do in a situation like that, if I'm trying to cut down a weight, is I'll take my Sony FX3. I'll take one zoom with me for that, for video, like a 2470. That'll cover me for everything I need for autofocus. And it just gives me a lot of range there. And then I've got an adapter for my M lenses. So if I want to shoot with the primes, I can. So I don't have like four fixed prime lenses for Sony and four fixed prime lenses for Leica. And that's just going to be too much. I mean, it's gonna be, even with the system with the jacket, it's going to be a lot. You know, look for versatile gear. Think about what you're going to do. Think about adapters and how you can consolidate your lenses. Maybe one zoom and a couple primes outside that range, like I mentioned before, something like that. But just consolidate, consolidate and invest in gear that's versatile. Even tripods, the same thing. I mean, that's more for your check-in stuff, but tripods that can do a bit of both. For any gear that can work both ways, invest in that. Tip number five, something I didn't do on this trip, something I used to do all the time, but I got complacent. Things were easy in Asia for a long time, never had any problems. Again, 
things have changed, but this tip is to research the airline before you fly. Rules are changing quickly. Airports are different, domestic, international. Different airlines even have different policies or even enforce their policies in some countries and don't in other countries. It's been my experience. So do your research, go online, look at the website, but don't end there. Go on forums, go on places like Twitter, like where I go, that's where people complain. That's where I go. So, you know, put in the hashtags, put in the hashtag of the airlines, look for complaints, look for what people are saying because Again, things used to be very easy in Asia and the pain and a pain in the butt in the US and Australia, but now it's a pain in the butt here. So other countries are gonna be different. Different airports are gonna have different rules or they're gonna enforce rules more than others. So see what people are talking about, see what people's experiences are, just do your homework. So that's my five main tips, but don't leave yet. I've got some little bonus hacks here, some little bonus tips I wanna throw in here. A couple things, a couple other things you can do is Laptops weigh a lot, they're heavy. You know, my laptop weighs a ton. This thing is, it just weighs a lot. And what you can do now, the new iPads, or I'm an Apple person, but other tablets, research them, check them out. The new iPads with the M1 chip, they're fast. So if you don't need to do a ton of post-processing on, on your trip, don't take your laptop, take an iPad, it weighs less. So, you know, buy a dongle and you can connect everything there and back everything up with a hard drive there. Another little hack is bring, bring some tape with you and bring a little marker with you and you know, when you see that they're tagging your bag, sometimes there's like extra tags out there um, that you can just sort of grab. I don't think it's stealing, they're there. It doesn't say don't take them. Take some of those tags for the airlines, sort of like stockpile those and you might need them later on so you could tie them up, tape them if they're using their own tape or something like that. But if you get a chance to grab those, you can distract people by having a conversation or you can do a two-man operation where one of you is talking, the other one's taking it and you're like, oh, you know, I mean, you're not gonna get in trouble. You just say, oh, I took them because I thought we were putting it on or whatever. Just, But if you get a chance, grab some of those tags with the airline logos on them, stockpile them. You never know when you're gonna need them later on in the future. Another thing is, I know this one's a lot easier said than done, but just try to be kind to people. I mean, they're people too. They, I know some airline people can be jerks and I've dealt with that, but not all of them are. Some of them are nice and they wanna help, but they're a lot more likely to help like a kind person than someone that comes in really angry and whiny or, or really being aggressive towards them. So try to remember that. Be nice. People are, just in general, they're going to be more sympathetic to a kind person than they are to an angry person. So try your best to do that. Another little move you can do if you're traveling with a friend. Again, this only works if they're doing the initial like weigh in and then they don't weigh it again. But another little move you can do, I'll do this one sometimes with my wife or if you travel again with a friend or assistant, you could do the old check in separately move. Keep all the heavy stuff with a friend. You check in, you get that bag weighed, you don't put a lot in it. Then you come out, they put all the gear in your bag, you take their gear, their heavy gear, you hold it for them, then they go, weigh the bag, that kind of move, that's another little that's another little trick you can do. But again, I don't think that's gonna work moving forward. I think they're getting a little more savvy on that one, but for now, you can at least try it, especially if they're not gonna weigh you again at the gate. And lastly, what you can do is also just like, don't give up about complaining, don't give up about fighting for your rights as a consumer. Um, Get out there, go on their message boards, tag them on Twitter. Again, you don't have to be super mean about it. Like, just write, like, hey, that sucks. Their policy's not great for photographers. Put it out there. The more of us that put it out there, the more times we tag them, the more times we shame them. Just get that information out there. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, again, tagging them, all that stuff, the more they're likely to listen to us. So if you had a bad experience, or even if you didn't, and you think the rules are BS, go out there and say it. Put it out there. We are consumers. That's our only power we have. They're gonna try to get as much money out of us as you can. We can go with the airlines that are better. Like even, for example, I should say that, like Emirates was real crap to deal with. They used to be great, they were crap to deal with. But Korean Airlines on the way back didn't wear carry-on bags at all. So, and they allowed two. So it was a much different experience. Again, they might change, that might change, but be loyal to the ones that are working. Congratulate the ones that are working. Say nice things about them, you know, and then shame the other ones. Shame the bad ones. Shame the Emirates and promote the Korean Airlines. Sorry, Emirates. You know, I'll give you a chance to come around. I used to like you, you were good, but no longer. So that's it for today, guys. I hope some of these hacks work for you. If you have your own hacks, I'd love to hear them in the comments section. If you have your own funny anecdotes, your own funny little stories out there, put those in there. I love those travel stories. I hope you found some of these tips helpful. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to have a wonderful day. Bye.